unless you've planned on serving me up with some ice cream and Nutella, I'm not getting involved. One day I'm gonna invest in a new chair because every time I move, it's just, that's irrelevant. What is relevant is the fact that it's Thursday and it's time for a new video. We're having gander a few people today and a few names I've been meaning to cover for a while and a few names that have popped up in the comment section recently, be that last video or a few videos ago. And those names are Sophie, Games by Brains, Caroline O'Mahony, and Megan Grubb. So three names, and some of these individuals I have tickled in the past with some content, i.e. had a look at some of their bits and bobs here and there, but I've never actually done a full video on them. But today, we're gonna have a gander at some of their recent workout footage, and I'm gonna say whether it's good source, no source, and maybe say why the source is questionable. But obviously, before we crack on, you know what's about to occur. We're gonna get sweaty today, because this is a warm and cozy hat, which I will likely be wearing for a lot of winter. I know a lot of people like winter, and obviously like the cold, especially when it's like near Christmas time and whatnot. I dread winter every year. My mood goes from like boom to boom, dips significantly, and I'm just, I'm not looking forward to it. It doesn't have flicky up ears. What it does have is this, wait, hang on a second. This is fantastic. It's really warm, actually. It's actually quite comfy. It's a bit small for my oversized forehead, but we don't talk about that because I don't want to bully myself on camera today. But what we do talk about is workout footage and people lifting some of the weights. Sophie, Gains by Brains, a popular name and one I have obviously tickled a few times in the past throughout other videos. Today, we're having a look at some lower body stuff, looking at the quads specifically. So the big, fat, juicy thigh muscle on the front there. Let's have a gander at what's occurring. In fairness, Lama Squat is actually a pretty good variation, especially for those who might struggle with depth because of the angle of the torso and the fact that you're allowed essentially pushing the, your weight into something it does allow you to get quite low quite comfortably her toes are quite pointed forward and her stance is quite narrow i don't know much about her mobility allowances and hindrances i would usually maybe adopt a slightly wider stance potentially and maybe turn the toes out a little bit just helps with opening up the hips because obviously when you initiate the squat i wish i could show you but i can't really show you i'm gonna try you can't really see me as a chair in the way if you could I hope you can see me. I'm trying to go over here. So what you want to do is externally rotate at the hips, boom, which means turn the hips out, which then pushes the knees out, which will then help allow you to track the knees in the direction of your toes. Especially when getting used to learning to squat, I like to, rather than dropping straight down, I like to then kick my hips back and sink into the hole, like so. Externally rotate the hips, hips back and sink like you're sitting onto a chair behind you. If you have a narrow stance with your feet pointed forward, it's a bit harder to externally rotate the hips, which also does actually bring the glutes into a little bit more when you get that external rotation. It can also make it a bit harder for you to actually sit into the hole, which is obviously what we're trying to do with the squat. Bulgarian squat, oh, one of my favorite movements it's not it is it's one of my favorite movements regarding effectiveness when looking at glute development and quad development great movement to target both of those things but i hate it it makes me feel sick it makes me sweaty and it makes me feel very uncomfortable and sad this sumo deadlift variation is on another level you have to try it apparently i must and maybe i will obviously she's sumo deadlifting in which the hands are inside the legs rather than outside the legs when you take the typical stance where your hands are outside your legs that's a conventional deadlift when you take a wider stance where your hands are inside the legs that's a sumo deadlift Left. And as a whole, a sumo is pretty solid. As you can see, toes nice and pointed out. We like that. Shins looking pretty, pretty vertical, pretty solid angle. Open up the hips, see back into it. Back position solid, head position solid. So what this is, is a pause sumo deadlift. Personally, when I am doing a pause deadlift, again, it depends on your weaknesses. I tend to pause literally like an inch off the floor. And it's a really good movement to help with maintaining tightness and maintaining positioning. It's a movement I would usually implement if I were losing tightness or losing positioning at a certain point in the movement, or if my technique needed to be addressed, I would then chuck in a pause deadlift or pause sumo deadlift to help target those technique hindrances and weak spots. If you are experiencing technical hindrances, pause movements can be fantastic, as can tempo-based movements in which you'll maybe do a three-second concentric and a three-second eccentric. Let's have a gander at a quick leg workout. Not every workout is going to be your best, but always remember that the bad ones keep the momentum of the good ones going. You can't expect to go into the gym and PB every time. I know I preach a lot of progressive overload. Doesn't mean you're going to be able to progressively overload every session. It's just as often as you can. And if you can't progressively overload for a while, like maybe a few sessions or a few weeks perhaps, then something may need to be addressed. You've got to look at external factors, sleep, hydration, nutrition, things like that. But then also look at maybe it's time to spice up the program. So she's doing the RDL, so Romanian deadlift. 
Great for posterior chain, great for the glutes, great for the hammies, love that. But you see the mixed grip. This is personal preference and I'll explain why. When I'm deadlifting, I don't personally like doing mixed grip. That's when I really do preach the importance of doing movements like Paloff Press, Copenhagen Planks, those oblique dominant movements that do help with the anti-rotation side of things. When you are mixed gripping, there's a likelihood that you could rotate slightly. That's something we need to address because that can then lead to imbalances, which then could contribute to injuries and things like that. All I'm saying is if you're gonna deadlift, you're gonna assume a deadlift or your primary deadlift work, go for it, do mixed grip if that's what's best for you. But for RDLs and like accessory work, I would avoid mixed grippy as possible. For this, I would usually strap up. If it's between a landmine RDL and an actual RDL, I'd go to the typical RDL. You're gonna be able to lift more weight, thus progressively overload further, greater stimulus, so many things come into it. If a variation hinders your ability to lift weights, but doesn't necessarily alter the biomechanics of the movement too drastically, like this, the biomechanics of the movement hasn't really changed, but the weight lifted has decreased significantly, it's probably not a fair trade-off. Stick to the original and the one that allows you to lift heaviest with a very similar movement pattern. Quick intermission time. If you are liking the video and want to see more videos like this, drop a like on the video because 500 likes is the goal. So it'd be bloody stupendous if we could hit that. Thank you very much. Please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week. Because realistically, like I said in the last video, I know a few of you are watching this and you're not subscribed. Here's the thing. Here's what we need to talk about. I'm trying my best to, to convince you to join the community, join the TFN of family because we would love to have you we would welcome you with open arms if i ever saw you in person you came up to me and say harry can i have a cuddle bring it in bring it in let's tuck it in there i see austin every video first comment fantastic he, he's super fast the flash the more of you that subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so you get notified when i upload the more competition he has and one day someone's gonna beat him and that day is gonna be my best don't get me wrong austin much love for you great man if you aren't gonna subscribe and join the the notification gang for me do so to defeat austin he's the final boss in this situation so we must come together and we must do it but on top of that obviously at the end of the video we do comment question of the week so if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video drop it down below in the comment section and I shall do so. But nonetheless, intermission is over, a bit longer than expected. Like I said, we don't always progressively overload. We are now regressively underloading, yeah? And we shall crack on with the rest of the video. Caroline O'Mahony is someone who has popped up for a long time and someone I have neglected to cover, and I'm sorry for that, I'm doing so now. Let's have a gander, because I've been hearing good things. Full workout, shoulder press, lateral raises, single arm pull down, seated cable rows, tricep rope push, I was doing my wrong. Obviously you could adjust this in many ways, there's no right or wrong way, but personally, one of the ways I would adjust it is potentially going single arm pull down first, followed by the shoulder press, followed by the single arm dumbbell row, followed by the cable row, the lateral raise, and then the push down. It depends on your priorities, it depends on what your goals are, which areas you want to put a great emphasis on. Another thing you could consider is maybe doing the lateral raise first as a means of warming up the shoulders. It shouldn't take away from your press work, nor should it take away from your pull work. Usually one would prioritize multi-joint movements first, which are likely the movements you're gonna lift the most weight on. Oh, I'm gonna, controversial opinion, the lat pull down, so the generic like vertical pull, lat pull down, is overrated for lat development. It's far better suited for mid-back development. Movements like this, where you're pulling at more of a diagonal diagonal angle, so rather than going up to down, you're going almost like it's like a almost like high row are far better for lat development. Another consideration when doing a lat pull down is look at the upper arm angle. Your lats are most activated when your upper arm is closer to the body. So if you're doing a lat pull down like so, I'm not that close to the body. There's a lot of there's a lot of gap here. Do you know what I mean? If I go for like so, my upper arm is very close to the body, and that allows me to not only go through a greater range of motion, but also shorten the muscle even further. That, that's a that's a lat training tip if you want it. I would choose this movement over a normal vertical lat pull down when looking to optimize lat development. When doing a lateral raise, personally, I like to ensure my elbow is higher than my wrists. I rotate my thumbs down so my pinkies are leading, therefore placing great emphasis on the area you are likely wanting to target more, being the medial deltoid. The, the cap here. Elbows higher than the wrists lead with the pinkies, but not too aggressively because you don't want to do this and look like you're trying to fly away. Do you know what I mean? It's probably not going to work very well. Unilateral leg press, solid. Not many gyms actually have this, but if you do have this, I think it's a good movement. Just be sure to lead with your weakest side. The last thing you want to do is go to failure, lead with your stronger side and not be able to match reps on your weaker side. Megan Grubb, let's have a gander at you. What are you doing today? I know you've popped up a few times. I'm curious. I'm very curious. Five moves to build your bum. I definitely need to know that because my bum is not being built very well, unfortunately, but we're getting better. So before anyone comes at me for dead glutes in the comment section, it's growing, okay? Smith machine sumo deadlifts. Uh, realistically, gonna be straight with you and you may not like this. If you're sumo deadlifting in the Smith machine, especially on plates, I am probably going to write a strongly worded email and I shall finish the email with regards. Don't do that. 
please. Regards. The Smith machine has its place. Do not rely on it, but it does have its place. The bar path is decided for you. I don't think that's necessarily optimal, especially when looking at things like a deadlift. Going to be straight with the Smith machine leg press like this. We're going to talk about some things here. I'm okay with my ass being described as a pancake. What I'm not okay with is myself being described as a pancake. If I'm Smith machine leg pressing and I'm rocking multiple plates per side of that bad boy because, you know, lift big to get big and all that jazz, and that comes tumbling down on my face, not only will my glutes be flattened, I will be flattened too. Unless you plan on serving me up with some ice cream and Nutella, I'm not getting involved. Sumo deadlift, technique isn't bad. Tap and go, I'm not really a big tap and go deadlifter myself. I think deadlift, dead stop, personally, but again, time and place. Head positioning looks pretty solid. Back positioning looks pretty solid. Breathing looks a bit off. It seems like she's kind of rushing into it. Like, she's not really taking time to really brace that core and fill up the abdomen. The knees are cavy in a bit. You see there's a lack of external rotation of the hips here, which means the glutes aren't doing as much work as they could be doing. That should then allow your shin to remain more vertical. Pretty good range of motion, actually. I rate that. A lot of people, when they leg press, this is another thing. So many dudes load up 500 kilos on the leg press and do a half rep. No one cares how much you leg press. How much you squat? Show me your squat. Do you, do you go ask to grass? You got full wrong? Tell me that. Answer these questions. I need to know. I'm not here to train the ego. I'm here to train the legs. Find that balance. Technique should be splendid. Weight shifted should be optimal for you. Ego should be minimal. One could almost consider adopting a slightly wider stance and almost opening up the hips with the leg press, replicating somewhat of a squat movement, which then could have a greater carryover to the squat. She can't really go too much lower because if she does, she'll probably end up absolutely yeeting herself in the face with her knee, and that's not ideal. Those are my thoughts and opinions on the three content creators we have seen today. If you would like to see me cover them all in greater detail, maybe do a deep dive on each of them, let me know in the comment section and I can certainly do so. I want to create content that you want to watch. If you don't want to watch it, then I'm not really here to create it. Find that balance. Things that I like doing, things that I like creating, and things that you like viewing and invest your time into. About building a healthy relationship between us. Common question of the week. I think this is an interesting one. Creatine. Would you recommend and for who? I'm a quite a big fan of creatine. It's one of the most researched supplements on the market. It's also one of the cheapest supplements on the market. If your goals are to build muscle or increase strength, they're kind of like resistance training related goals, then I think creatine can be a fantastic addition to your supplement arsenal. Mass crap online that basically says, you need to buy my really expensive creatine because it's better. No, it's not. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna buy some cheap ass creatine monohydrate. It's gonna stay on the back, three week loading phase. You're gonna say, no, thank you. You're gonna take five grams a day every single day without fail training or rest day five grams a day 365 days a year roughly around the same time but it's not that important and that's what you're going to do if you are planning on supplementing creatine but that's it that is the video like i said earlier on in the video if we did hit 500 likes that is the goal and that'd be bloody splendid i would really appreciate it please do consider tickling the red button down below subscribing to the channel i would really appreciate it and even tickling the bell next to it and if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video drop it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and i shall do so hopefully you managed to take something away from this video be that a smile be that a laugh or be that a little bit of information who knows thank you for tolerating me thank you for tolerating my pancake and thank you for tolerating the video